Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! Welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look on how to generate a template that it's recognized by WordPress, even if the template is inside the plugin. Because you know, sometimes WordPress is kind of weird. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a free Linux based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. So, as an example, let's generate a new folder inside our plugin based directory. I want to call it something like page dash templates, but of course you can call it however you want. And here I want to create a new file called uh, two dash columns dash tpl.php. This could be kind of like one of the many generic files that you saw in many different themes. And the way that WordPress works with themes whenever you want to create a custom template, it's really, really easy. So we can open the PHP tags and here by writing a simple comment, we can write the unique tag called template name inside the comment and then specifying the template name. So something like two columns layout, something like that. If we do this inside the theme, WordPress automatically will recognize this uh, unique PHP file with this template name and will list this file as selectable in a list of templates available for pages, posts, and custom post types. But if we access our administration area now, if for example, we go inside the pages, we access whatever page we have created, here there's no section for the custom templates. And if you want to give it a try just to double check if it's actually working, you can access the theme that you're currently using and generate that specific file and using the template name tag in a comment. But if we do this in the plugin like I'm doing, this doesn't work because WordPress automatically doesn't crawl all the plugins that are installed in a user's website and doesn't pull all the custom templates. So we need to create some hooks and use some specific actions to tell WordPress that it needs to read our custom templates. So let's do it. First, let's access the template controller that we already created for our custom template section. If we access the administration area here in inside the Alicat section, we can activate the templates manager, which is kind of silly because I'm not going to create a manager for the templates that would be super duper complicated. I just want to activate some custom manager. So if we save the changes here, I actually want to change this name. I don't want to activate templates manager. So let's access the base controller where we're declaring all these checkboxes. And here, instead of activate templates manager, activate custom templates, something like that. It's going to be more obvious what we're doing. And also after we activate this section, we're going to have this sub page here, templates manager that we don't actually need because it's superfluous. We're not going to use a template manager there. So in the template controller.php file, we can basically remove all these things that we're doing. So we can remove the function, the set the sub pages. We don't want to create a new sub page. We can remove all the shenanigans of the settings API. And of course, to clean it up, let's remove the variable of this class and also the admin callbacks and the settings API. We don't need to use those. Perfect. Now we have this clean starting point for our custom templates. First, what we need to do, let's define a publicly accessible variable for our template controller class called templates, where we're going to use basically this variable is going to be an array where we're going to list all our custom templates to tell WordPress to use and recognize. So let's do it directly here. We can say that this templates variable that we just declare is going to be equal to an array that it's an associative array because we need to specify both the location of the template that we want to include and then the unique name of the template because as I said WordPress automatically doesn't recognize this thing. So we can say in the array the first parameter is the location of our template and we specify it in our sidebar here we specify this page templates two columns TPL PHP. So let's do it page dash templates forward slash two dash columns dash tpl dot php and then this file is specified as a key of the array the value has to be the title that we want to assign to this custom template so we can copy 
this tile name that we have here. Perfect. Now it's time to tell WordPress, hey, we have this list of custom templates coming from our plugin, please integrate it in our administration area in the template selection. So we can use a built-in filter of WordPress. So let's trigger the add filter function and the filter it's called theme underscore page underscore templates. And of course here we can specify as a second parameter the filter, the usual array with the instance of this class and then the function that we want to call in order to code whatever we have to code. And I'm going to call this just custom templates, a really simple name. So let's create this method now public function custom underscore template and the custom underscore template thanks to this theme page template will receive an array as an attribute of this method carrying all the templates currently available in our WordPress installation. We can call this variable whatever you want. Let's call it templates just for easy of use. And then what we have to do here, we have to merge this array of templates with our custom array. So we can do something like that here. Actually, I wrote templates. <laughs> Is this Spanish? No, I don't think it exists. So it's templates. Uh, let's be sure to not make any typos. But yeah, this I was saying we have the full array of all the available templates in our WordPress installation. So we can uh, override this variable and say the templates variable that we have here, the templates array should be an array merge of the current templates variable plus our own custom templates variable that belongs to this very own class. And now we can safely return the templates variable that now carries also our custom template. So if we save these and we access back at our administration error, we go back inside the pages and we access one page. Look what we have here. Now we have the page attribute section with the template drop down available and we have the title of our custom template. Fantastic. So now if we select this two columns layout template and we update, of course, all the settings are saved. Everything is clear. If we access also the quick edit, we have it here in the list of templates. Fantastic. But if we try to actually view this page and open it, you can see here we still have this is like the default template of the 2017 theme that I'm currently running on my test site and is not picking up our custom template. And we can also double check by writing a little bit of a boilerplate in our template. So if we access the two columns TPL, we can first get the header because we need the header here. Otherwise we won't have anything. Then we can close the PHP tags and here we can just open an H1 and say, this is a custom two columns template, something like that has a placeholder. And then of course, because we want to have all the good WordPress stuff, we want to also get the footer method and we can leave the PHP tag open because these is continuing as a PHP file. So we don't need to close it just to avoid blank spaces. So now we have a little bit of content here. We should see these custom two templates each one tag, but if we refresh, we still don't see anything and we just see the default template of this theme that is printing the title of the page. But of course, in the administration area, this is selected as active template. Why this is happening? Well, that's because we just told WordPress to visualize the available templates or our new custom templates from our plugin in the list of drop down. We're not saying to WordPress, hey, if that page or post has that template, just use it. Don't use the default one because WordPress doesn't do that automatically if the template is coming from a plugin. So that's what we have to do. We need to define another filter. And in this case, the method or the hook inside this filter is going to be called template include. And this is a method that happens every time a post or a page or a custom post type it's loaded. WordPress checks if that specific content that we're calling has a custom template. So we can intercept that specific action and inject our custom template if the request matches. 
So let's specify as usual the array, the instance of this class, and then here we can say something like load template. We can create a, a custom method called load template, but of course you can call it however you want as usual. And here let's create this custom method public function load template. And also in this case, the load template method it's getting the actual template that this specific post or page is gonna be using. So whenever a post or a page gets loaded, this method gets called because we are intercepting it with the filter and we know which template it's using. So because now we are intercepting this method in the template include, if we save it and we check the front end, this is what we're gonna get because we're intercepting all the templates, all the pages, and we're not printing what WordPress is expecting to print. So before doing anything else, always remember to return at the end of this method, the actual template. Otherwise our entire website won't visualize, won't be visualized. It will be completely empty. So now we're returning the template here. Now let's do a little bit of PHP magic. So first we need to access the post variable to know which post we are visualizing. And for WordPress, post pages, custom post types are all the same and are considered posts. So first we wanna check if the post variable is not defined. So we're accessing this method accidentally or we're loading something that is not related to what we care. We can just simply check if this is not set, so it's null, it's false or whatever, something else except of a post, we can just simply return the template. So we're not gonna create any issue with our template engine of the default theme of WordPress. Otherwise we can first get the current template name. So let's define a variable and let's check if the post that we're currently visualizing has a template, a custom template associated with. So we can check the get post meta and we use this method many many times for our custom meta boxes and we can pass the post id and say hey does this post id have a unique meta key called underscore wp underscore page underscore template and return the single string one single data of this dot return multiple values so now in this variable we have the name of the template and if we do something like this simply echo this template name, we can check whenever we access a page. So here we refresh up here, we actually have that template name. But of course, if we access the home page and we access whatever another post, let's do something like that. This post doesn't have that custom template. Or I mean, has a template, but it's the default template of WordPress. Then in this case, it's single.php. But this unique page is actually carrying our URL of our template. So the page templates two columns, tpl.php. Perfect. Now that we know that, we can say that if this template name is part of our template, load it. And to do that, we can simply check if our variable templates that if you remember we defined before is carrying the full list of all the accessible and usable templates by the user. If that variable template has a key with this unique name and we know that it has it, we can do something. But instead of uh, carrying and checking for the positive, let's check if this is not set. So if this variable is not set in our custom templates array, also in this case, return the template, the default one. Otherwise, we can tap that file that the user specified and we can define a variable called uh, the file, of course, or whatever you want to call it. And this file is basically the combination of the full plugin path that we have and then the template name that we're fetching from the post metadata. So we can say that this plugin path and this plugin path is um, variable accessible from the base controller here that we're extending. We did this many, many videos ago and then we can concatenate with the template underscore name variable. So now we can check one last check just to be sure that we're not failing that if the file that we have here exists, so we can use a PHP method called file 
exists and this is going to return through if it exists or false if it doesn't exist in that directory. If this exists, only if this exists, let's return that specific file. Otherwise, if this fails, we're going to return the empty template. So we basically did it. Let's check our front end. Now, this is the old template. Let's refresh. Oops, sorry. I'm calling a method called feel exists is not feel. It's a file. I'm the master of typos. Let's go back. Let's refresh once again. Boom. There you go. Look what we have here. The custom two columns templates, which is the content that we have in our custom template. This is loading properly. There you go. We have our custom template, which is fantastic. So in this tutorial, we quickly learn how to hook a custom template coming from our plugin to the default directory available for WordPress whenever the user wants to select a template from the dropdown. And then we checked how we can uh, see if the template is actually used by that specific post. And if it's used, just re return that file automatically. This is something that we have to do because as I said, the WordPress doesn't automatically checks and lists and uses all the templates, the custom templates available in a plugin. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next one.